We're uh, here in the National Museum of Wales in Cardiff and uh, I'm going to be in conversation with Henry Wynne Evans who's Head of Learning across the museums. Um, tell us, give us an idea of what the collection comprises of here uh, in Edie. Well the collection at National Museum Cardiff is really varied um, and it spans from historic 1500s to the present day. Um, students can come here and they can follow thematic journeys around yeah. the collection. There are some themes which are really strong. They can work, they can study the work of individual, individual artists. There are artists like Gwen John, Augustus John, Kerry Richards, um, to name just a few of the artists that's quite strong within this collection. Um, the, the other interesting thing here is that the the collections change, the displays change right. on a fairly regular basis. Yeah, as they often do in other uh, galleries and museums. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think it's really important for teachers who are planning to bring students into, into, you know, to galleries to check beforehand, Be, especially if you want to work, look at, you know, an individual painting. An individual painting can, go, you know, go off display. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, so it's really important that they check beforehand. Yeah. But also, um, most galleries, certainly you know, across the country, will have changing exhibitions. Um, usually, three or four um, exhibitions each year. Uh, it's quite important at the start of a student's uh, year twelve, say, uh, in studying art and design, that they find out what exhibitions are likely to be held during their period of, uh, of study A level or AS and A level. Absolutely, because some of those exhibitions could lend themselves really well into, um, you know, an individual student's mm. coursework, um, or it could even inform somebody's coursework. Yeah. Um, but it's just really important to check what those changing exhibitions are. Yeah. And quite often, uh, international artists coming into galleries with to show their work, you know, work that probably isn't represented by by the collection. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I think that's true across the whole country. Yes, yes. Because what we're discussing here isn't just about this museum, but it has broader implications so that when um, in different parts of the country, then you find out what is available and are going to be available within the locality. And not, there is this tendency, really, I feel, to sometimes undervalue what's almost on your own doorstep. I think that's really important because if a student, well students for instance, will, will come into this museum as part of a school visit, um, and what's really important is they feel that they can come back to the gallery as individuals. Yes, yes. So if they've started something during a school visit, you know, the fact that the museum or the gallery is fairly local to them means that they can go back as an individual yes. and continue with that, you know, Yes, the work that, that they're doing. Personal engagement is really, as far as we're concerned, in assessing uh, candidates' work, it is really critical. It makes all the difference in the world, and um, that uh, almost a student can take it uh, as their own, you know, in yeah, terms of their, yeah. their response to it. So, uh, I mean, I think what's also important to maybe point out is that there's probably a gallery fairly close to, you know, to everybody. Yes. Um, yes. You know, there's a tendency, I think, for you know, some people to think that they have to go to big cities. You know, it happens within Wales. Some schools feel that they have to come to the National Museum, mm. where you know there are brilliant galleries on the, on the doorstep. Yes. Um, yes. In very remote parts of, of the country. Yeah. And the good thing there is that they can all be doing sort of primary research. You know, uh, if if uh, there isn't a, um, an extensive education department, um, then. Um, with it attached to a museum, then they can be doing that kind of work and cut themselves. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So, what do you think, um, what's so special about coming to a gallery? I think coming into, I think when students come to a gallery, they see something that they don't have access to in their own classrooms. Mm -hmm. I think the experience of looking at artwork um, in the flesh, I suppose, you know, in front of the actual work is really, really different. Yeah, yeah. Um, students are quite often amazed about the scale of the work. Mm -hmm. They're able to get really close up to the work. Yes. They can look at fine detail. They can look at texture. They can often look at colour in, in a very different way. Yeah. And sometimes the artwork itself um, invites the viewer 
into the artwork. I know that sounds yeah. a little bit yeah. strange, yeah. but yeah. some of the work that we've got on, on display at the moment in this gallery invite, invites you as the viewer to become part let's of just, the work. Let's just pause it then because we'll, we'll move to look at a uh, particular work. Mentioning uh, just now the importance of uh, seeing work uh, close up then, and uh, this is uh, one that's uh, typical of it the is point actually, we're making. It is actually because standing here really closely to this um, you know, enormous Gillian Ayres canvas, um, which was actually painted back in the 80s when she lived for a while in North Wales in the Thin Peninsula, and it's her response to the environment and the landscape in North Wales. Um, but you can actually see individual brush marks, you know, the really thick textured paint yeah. and you know, being able to stand this close to it, you experience the work um, quite differently to how you would experience it maybe online or within a, in a book or something. And equally then, there are, there's work with really very fine detail in it. Uh, the complete contrast to this wouldn't, uh, yeah. uh, wouldn't show, yes. And I think what's great with it is that you know, we can stand this close to it, we can also view it from the other side of the gallery, we can experience it in very different ways. Yes. And that's yes. absolutely true of sculptures and all sorts of other works yes. 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 On, on display in the gallery. Yes, fine. We'll pause there a moment then. And we've moved across it then, uh, already, and um, we were going to pick up the discussion in terms of the kind of strategies you use to uh, encourage critical thinking? Mm. I think when students come into the gallery, whether that's individually or as a group visit, what, you know, what we want more than anything is for students to feel um, that they're able to develop their own personal opinions, yeah. but that those opinions are informed opinions. And mm -hmm. um, you know, we've faced, we've met students in the past who are quite reluctant to take part in discussions and so on. So we would quite often start a set, you know, if we were leading the session, and I would encourage teachers to do the same, we would start the, the discussion with a very, very simple question. Mm -hmm. And this question, it's quite an obvious question really, but it could be something like, you know, what did you notice first in this painting? Right. And that might sound really obvious, mm -hmm. but it's a really good question. And it's a question that every single student within your group can feel that they can engage respond with to and respond yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, they might say something that's very obvious, they might respond to something obvious, or they might respond to something quite um, quite strange or you know less obvious. Yeah. Then you know the task then is for me as the facilitator or for the teacher to dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And um, you know there's one strategy we use which is called five lines. Yeah. So if a student you know said that the first thing they noticed was the rock, you know, right. so wh why did you notice the rock? Why is that that's such an important part of this painting? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they might say, well, you know, because it was there, or it was, um, it provided gifts. It, what, so every, after every response the student gives, you ask why again. Yeah, right, yeah, and then that kind of just enables them to question their own responses, yeah. but also to look more critically, um, both at the work in front of them and at the responses that they give. Yes, um, yes. We often use um, Rod Taylor's methodology, right. um, content, form, um, right. process and mood, and that's just a really good way of framing questions. Yep, right. But even if we were to use that process, we would still start with that really simple question of mm -hmm. what, what can you see. Yes. Um, we use another strategy where we might give students prompts they could be statements which are true or not true about a single work, um, which they can then apply, so they can then decide if the statement that they have in front of them. So the statement could be, um, you know, this work, you know, art has to be beautiful or right. art has to be political or yes. you know, whatever, you know, you can, you, can, you can think of lots and lots of statements. Yes. Yes. Um, but giving the students statements that they have to um, respond to right. is a really good way, I feel, of getting reluctant um, contributors to contribute. Right. And it's right. just literally a prompt yes. and then the yes. conversation can develop and and yeah. in, in all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. um, we're also quite interested in, in, in this museum 
in visual thinking strategies. Right, yes. And that's a methodology that's used extensively um, in the States. Um, it was developed in the 90s by a gentleman, a couple of people, that, including somebody called Philip um, Yenowine. And he, at the, at the time, worked in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Right. And that's a method for using imagery and paintings and photography um, to really develop critical thinking. Mm -hmm. um, it allows the students to decide what within the image they want to investigate right. yes. further. Yes. Um, so, you know, there are three kind of interesting questions. The first question could be, you know, what did you notice first in this work? Mm -hmm. Why did you notice it? You know, what else do you want to say about this work? There are a series of questions. Right. It's, it's a very different methodology to maybe an art historical inquiry, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but it's a really good starting point, and it just gets the students really looking, questioning, and um, kind of bringing their own interests and yes. their own experience. That's, that's so important, isn't yeah. it? You know, as far as we're concerned, because we, we're not looking for a good thing of facts and, and, and so on and, and stop um, phrases and statements, but we are looking for that personal yeah. response. That's what we really reward them in terms of A01 in, um, in assessing the so. We would also encourage students not to look at the, read the labels, and most yes. galleries yeah. will have labels, interpretation labels next to the works of art. And they'll give you facts, they'll give you some, you know, maybe some knowledge about the work. Yes. But quite often we see some students just reading the label, maybe copying the label into their sketchbooks mm -hmm. and moving on, yeah. without doing that kind of personal interrogation. Yes. So my advice to students that we work with is not to read the label in the first instance, right. to not to be too kind of influenced by what the label is telling you, yeah. to do that looking themselves first, right. and then at the end to go back to the label right. to find out some more, you know, yes. kind of I suppose factual information about yeah. the work. Yes. Um, you mentioned it, the, uh, about using Rod Taylor's methodology, which is, is familiar to most articles now. Mm -hmm. um, um, and do you think you could take us through uh, using that? Yes, we could, we, we could use this Sisley here. Yeah, they are fine. So you're going to take us through an application of Rod Taylor's uh, model then? In yeah, I think, that, I think what that model gives you is um, a way of framing questions yes. for the students. Yes. Um, so if we were to start with content, right. you could actually think about, again, that very simple and obvious question, what can you see here? You know, what do we notice first when we look at this work? So that's just purely about thinking about what you can see. Yes. And the students might respond to the fact that it's a landscape, mm -hmm. or they might, some might respond to a very tiny amount of detail within the work. Right. So what you know, I, 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 I could possibly the figures. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, within this particular work, there are some figures walking along the beach. There's one, there's two figures, um, on the ground above. So students could focus on something really small, mm -hmm. or they could focus on the whole. But I think that really kind of depends on the individual student like, yes. and what they, you know. So I've worked with this painting with students who know this place really well. So this is a location that's not far from this museum. Mm -hmm. So somebody who knows this place really well will bring their own kind of experience yes, of yes. having been there to that process of looking. Right, yes. So that first kind of, I suppose, um, content set of questions mm -hmm. is about looking at what you can see in front of you. Yes. Um, I, I like I like that uh, the, the, uh, the application you've given there because of course they could uh, return to the place and do some visual inquiry for themselves, you know, uh, um, or, or alternatively they could be looking for equivalents then within, within their own environment, mm -hmm. so that there is because we are concerned not only about um, analysing the work that's on the gallery wall there, but mm -hmm. what what. Has the, what meaning is that for their own creative ideas? Uh, you know, how, how, what links can they develop mm -hmm. from that uh, in their practical inquiry, then alongside their critical contextual yeah. inquiries? 
So um, we've talked about the content. So, so and then if you move on to the second strand, which is about form, and that's when we start talking about visual language. Right. And not every aspect of visual language applies to every single artwork. Mm -hmm. But with this particular work, I would guess that you would focus on colour, because the use of the artist, the artist's use of colour, Cicely's use of colour, is really important here. The impressionists were really interested in the science of colour and in the use of complementary colours. And if you're standing really close up to this work, you can, you know, see individual brush strokes yes. and, you know, see how complementary colours are used next to each other mm -hmm. in, I guess, sometimes unexpected kind of combinations. Yes. Yes. Um, I would probably talk about composition. I think the composition here, you know, is, is quite interesting. And I've seen kind of, I can remember examples when students have looked at this composition and applied this kind of composition within their own yeah, artwork. Right, right, right. So just yes. being informed by, um, by one aspect of visual language. Right. We would probably talk about scale. So you mentioned earlier that you, know, you pointed out to these yeah. the figures here. Yeah. So we often question, well, why do we think that Sicily populated this landscape with figures? Mm. Yes. And one um, response I've had yeah. to that question is it possibly is to give a sense of scale? So we have you know, figures on the landscape here, and we think that Sicily was probably you know, sitting or standing high on this cliff edge when he painted this work. Right. So we have the people over here, we have you know, tiny references to possibly figures walking along the beach. Yes. Um, I think we would look at the use of light and reflections, because the whole painting is bathed with light. So it's about choosing you know, some of those um, visual um, language. Yes. You know, and in this sense, I think probably colour, texture, light, composition. Yes. And um, scale. Again, and scale, scale yeah, yeah. 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 But just getting the student used to using those, yes. that language. Yes, because they could be developed within the Rod Taylor framework. They could be building their own framework, you know, and you're saying about scratching below the surface, mm. asking, uh, searching questions, you know, they could be, um, because every work of art would be different, could, uh, and so the responses would be um, authentic in as much as the candidate is giving of their own, you know, yeah, they're not just yeah. reading it up from the label or anywhere else, the prep work that they've done, mm. but they are actually um, uh, responding to that in a direct and a, and a, and a personal way. Yeah. So if we move through, you know, that, that yeah. methodology yeah. and we think about the third strand, which is around process. Yes. Yeah, so in terms of process, in, in, re in relation to this work, I would probably ask the students to try and imagine um, where Cicely was when he did this, how this work was conceived, how this work was created. And we know, for instance, in this instance, that Cicely was outside, probably in the open air, right. at least when he started working on this work. Yes. So then flipping it back to the student's own experience, you know, have they ever worked outside mm -hmm. in the open air? What impact did that have on their practice, on yes. their mark making and so on? And did the fact that he was outside influence the marks that were made and the composition that was created mm -hmm. and yeah. the colours that were, that were used and yes. so on? Yes, yes. And then, the, I suppose, the last one is mood. So yes. you could think about what the work itself um, conveys in you. Yes. You know, does it make you feel in a certain way, or how does the how, how might the artist um, have felt when he created yes. this work? Because one of the things we uh, ask our students is what are, what are their meanings and intentions, purposes. Uh, so that is wrapped up in what you're describing now then, uh, um, in terms of what mood is he trying to capture here? Absolutely. And you know, there's a great story, and uh, you know, we've talked about personal responses, but I also think that it's really important for students to become involved in a little bit of research themselves, and um, to contact right. galleries to find out some kind of background information for work, right. about work. Yeah. Because we know, for instance, at Sicily, although um, he was living in France at the time. He did come to Cardiff, and this was painted. Um, we believe that he, he got married when he was in Cardiff, and this was painted when he and his wife spent a few days um, in Penarth, which isn't very far from Cardiff. Right, right. So quite often in galleries, you'll find that you know quite a lot of the paintings and works of art have interesting stories behind them, right. and um, 
know, I think it's up to individual students to try and unearth some of those stories yeah, yeah. through some personal research. Yes. And galleries can help students in, within that process. Mm, yes. Of course, it's A level students, you would expect them to get the most out of a visit to attend at least some preparation. Mm -hmm. So, w how would you suggest they might go about that? I think in the first instance, students need to be quite broad in when, you know, they might be working to a particular theme or they might you know, know already about the work of a single artist that they, they're interested in. Yeah. I think mind mapping that theme is mm -hmm. a good starting point. I think doing a little bit of research, um, and that research can be done online. Um, it can be done through contacting the gallery beforehand um, to find out which works um, within that collection or within an exhibition is on display. Right. I think students need to be aware that um, works of art can be removed from gallery walls, yeah. you know, for all sorts of um, reasons. Yes. So they need to, you know, if there's something really specific that they want to see, they need to check that it's on display. Right. Um, you know, I've had experiences of students coming to the gallery to see something really specific and that work isn't there. Mm. So they need to contact the gallery beforehand if they want to do that. Um, there are some really good resources out there. Yes. Um, National Museum Wales itself has collections online. Mm -hmm. You can put all sorts of search terms into the search box and it'll give you, you know, everything that the museum has on that topic. Right. Um, you know, so for instance, if you place, if you type in doll into the search button, it'll have photography um, collection, it'll have social history collections, um, it'll have the painting by Gwen John of a Japanese doll, right. which will have Welsh dolls, you know, all sorts of kind of reference material yes, yes. linked to that theme. Yes. Um, there's also another really good um, website, which is called Art UK. Mm -hmm. So those are paintings in public collections across the whole of the UK that have been catalogued. Um, and that's available again as, um, as an online resource. Um, yeah. So is it Art, Art UK? Is the, it's um, called Art UK. Art UK. Yeah. Yes, because uh, pre preparation, uh, I mean, sadly, we do see examples in portfolios where it's obvious that the student has been to a gallery, but in terms of the evidence, you know, the benefits of that, it's just not apparent. Um, I mean, one of the things we encourage all students, A-level, GCSE, all students to do in the gallery is to draw and it's to co collect, you know, evidence of their visits. So we allow students, and most galleries would allow students to draw in front of the actual artwork. And I'm not talk talking about copying, you know, a whole no, artwork, no. but you know, kind of zooming in on one small. So if they're really interested in colour, they might just look specifically at, at a tiny section of work yeah, yes. and do some kind of exploded drawings yes. in their sketchbook um, and the annotation, annotation yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Um, so I think drawing and collecting evidence of visits. Yes. It's really important. And I think sometimes even using, uh, say, a mobile phone to, to record their, their, uh, their thoughts then, in Absolutely. terms of uh, yeah. engaging with the work. Yeah. Uh, strategies such as that, which, which really uh, give substance you know, to, their, to their study, because it, it's so easy that, um, that when they go back to their school or college, then that, it quickly evaporates, they're involved in other things. So that direct engagement, you know, capturing that at, at the moment at the time. Were, is so, uh, is so important. I've encountered so many students who, who tell me, oh, I remember that once I've gone back to school. And I kind of tell them, well, you know, you might have great memories, but you won't remember every little bit of detail. Okay. So every thought that comes into your mind, you know, if you're looking at one piece of work and you think it's, you know, you might have chosen something historic, and something contemporary, you know, make those links between the, yes. you know, compare, contrast, and do that when you're in the gallery, yes. rather the, than... I mean, those are, it seems a simple sort of uh, strategy, but comparing, contrasting, and there's no better place to do it, really, than when you're, you're engaging directly with those primary sources. Uh, Absolutely, and I think what's really great about this collection, um, in particular, is the fact that you do have, you know, a whole range of co you know collection. You have historic work, contemporary work in the same place, right. so you can just hop from one gallery to the other yes, and yes. make those connections yourself. Yes, 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 and that's true of lots, you know, lots of other galleries as well. Yes, yes. But I think that's the 
uh, that's the message we're giving really, isn't it? That you know, uh, it hasn't got to be this category. I mean, although this, there is something special about it. Absolutely, and we would want lots of people to visit this gallery. Indeed, but, yes, yes. You know, we're talking about things that are true. You know, across the country. Yes. Really. Fine.